Hi everyone, uh, this is Niranjana Vishwanathapura from Intel Corporation and the presentation is about uh, Intel Omnipath Fabric Virtual Network Interface Controller, uh, abbreviated OPA VNIC. So um, supporting Ethernet or Omnipath Fabric allows us to make uh, full use of uh, Ethernet support provided by the operating system, um, VLAN, etc over the fabric uh, without having any uh, verbs layering in the stack. Um, so the Intel uh, Omnipath uh, virtual network interface controller feature uh, supports this uh, Ethernet functionality over Omnipath fabric uh, by encapsulating um, an Ethernet packet uh, within an Omnipath packet. So the agenda for this presentation uh, is uh, we'll go through OPA VNIC architecture um, in brief and then we go uh, uh, in OPA VNIC uh, driver design in some detail. Okay, um, so, um, so in the middle of it uh, we have, uh, here is the diagram uh, which uh, depicts the architecture uh, in a very high level view. So in the middle of it is uh, an Omnipath virtual Ethernet switch, uh, which is a, a logical abstraction achieved by configuring the host on the fabric for header generation and processing. Um, so on the Omnipath fabric, uh, we have a uh, Omnipath virtual Ethernet switch, which has multiple uh, virtual ports. Um, and at the bottom we have uh, is depicted bunch of hosts on the fabric uh, and each has a uh, virtual NIC uh, and they are attached to this uh, virtual switch. Um, uh, one thing I want to stress on is this uh, virtual Ethernet switch is a, a, it's a virtual switch, it's a logical abstraction achieved uh, by configuring the host uh, depicted at the bottom and the configuration is done by um, an Ethernet manager software uh, which is depicted on the top uh, block up there. And uh, it is a part of uh, the trusted uh, fabric manager application. Okay, um, here we have a slightly complicated example. Um, here we have uh, more than one um, virtual ethernet switch uh, depicted in different uh, color codes. Um, and um, it is connected to a bunch of hosts uh, depicted at the bottom. And as you, as you can see, uh, the host can have uh, more than one virtual NIC on it. And uh, each virtual NIC on the host is connected to a separate virtual uh, Ethernet switch. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at the second from the left, it has uh, the host. Uh, it has four VNICs, um, each connected to uh, a different virtual Ethernet switch uh, with the matching uh, color codes there. Okay, uh, we mentioned that um, the, um, uh, uh, the Ethernet packets are encapsulated within an Omnipath packet uh, and the top diagram shows how that is being done. Uh, so we retain the Ethernet header and the payload as is from the Ethernet packet and uh, we append an Omnipath header and a tail and we put it on wire. Um, and the bottom diagram below shows uh, the Omnipath encapsulated Ethernet packet um, in a little bit more detail. Uh, in the middle of it is the Ethernet packet um, and on the top we have the uh, Omnipath en encapsulated uh, header. Um, and it has a bunch of fields here in the um, encapsulated header and as we mentioned uh, the encapsulating host has all this information required uh, to do the encapsulation is provided to it by uh, the Ethernet manager software. Uh, for example, we have a uh, destination lid there, a source lid and a destination lid. Um, and the destination lid uh, is derived from uh, the destination MAC address on, in the Ethernet uh, packet. Um, and there is a uh, DMAC to delete translation table. Um, and it, it, it uses the table to get the delayed, uh, the packet should be delivered to and so on. Um, one interesting field in this is um, uh, depicted in the light blue up there, it's the L4 header, uh, which is basically a virtual switch ID. 
um, it is the one that represents uh, which of the uh, multiple virtual NICs uh, the packet belongs to on the host. Um, obviously, on the receive side, um, the virtual switch ID is used to uh, you know, demultiplex the packet uh, into one of the virtual switches on that host. Um, in the tile, we have, uh, oh, we, we do require the pack, the whole packet to be flit aligned, which is quad word aligned. So uh, there is some optional padding required. The maximum padding required is uh, seven bytes. Um, and uh, in the tile, uh, there is a tile byte, which is basically contains the amount of padding required uh, so that the receive side can uh, strip off the padding. Uh, and on the receive side, it will strip off the tail, the header, and it will only push the Ethernet packet um, up the network stack. Okay, uh, going to the driver design. Um, this diagram shows uh, our Omnipath VNIC software stack. Um, and uh, um, the, uh, the blue shaded block there, that's the only new component here. Um, that is our OPA VNIC uh, user level protocol um, module. Uh, and it is an IB client. Uh, it registers as an IB client and sits on top of uh, IB core. Um, it implements uh, OPA VNIC RDMA NetDev functionality and the EMA functionality. Uh, we'll come to the NetDev functionality in the next slide. Um, the EMA functionality, the EMA stands for Ethernet Manager Agent. Um, as we mentioned, uh, the Ethernet manager software configures the host um, um, uh, with all the information required for encapsulation. And the Ethernet manager agent is the one that talks to the Ethernet manager. Um, and this communication happens uh, over the standard verbs uh, MAD protocol. Um, and hence, uh, uh, it is uh, interfaced with the IB MAD uh, module up there. Um, and the, it, the yellow shade there means uh, we don't need any changes to that. Um, so the EMA is an IB MAD agent. Um, and uh, the EM control happens through uh, the IB MAD interface. Um, and at the bottom, we have uh, the HFI-1 driver, um, HFI-1 OFA driver, and, and uh, we have added uh, VNIC support to it. Um, so the, the, shade rep, uh, the green shade represented has been updated. Um, so, so basically, uh, we want the, um, the OFA driver to interface directly with the network stack. Um, um, and, and, and as we know, the Linux network stack uh, interfacing revolves around uh, the net device structure and the, uh, and the SKBs. Um, and we would like to use the same interface um, uh, and without any translation um, to verbs API in between. Uh, so the HFI one driver interfaces directly with the network stack. And it defines a bunch of uh, uh, net device operations, um, uh, which is part of the standard net device structure, um, um, uh, so that it can directly uh, interact with the Linux network stack. Um, and uh, the top OPA VNIC uh, ULP uh, module, it can override some of the net device operations, um, like open, close, um, you know, set multicast list, um, and uh, et cetera. It can, it can override some of those operations in order to do the control plane operation. Um, hence, it also interfaces uh, with the uh, Linux NetDev uh, stack directly. Uh, and that is uh, being depicted as uh, the admin control there. So, um, so we have, um, a case where we have uh, uh, the, both the ULP and the driver uh, interfacing with uh, the Linux network stack uh, for a uh, net device object. Um, and uh, it requires a kind of interfacing between the driver um, and the ULP. And that is the uh, interface update to the IB core um, that we will be talking about. OK. So what are the changes required um, in the interface uh, in the IB core? So the couple of the requirements that are driving the change is, um, one is that uh, it should allow the OFA device driver to interface directly with the Linux network stack. 
um, and no translation to verbs interface should be required, and it should, thus it should provide some optimization. Um, and these were, uh, as we saw in, the, uh, in our previous use case in the previous slide. Uh, so the answer is an RDMA NetDev, um, and it is being defined as a generic NetDev uh, interface to the OFA device drivers where uh, Linux network stack interfacing is required. Um, and uh, it should, by generic, we mean it should have the ability to support different kind of RDMA NetDev devices. Um, obviously, the one is uh, this OPA Winic uh, use case, and another one would be uh, IP or IB because it also does uh, the similar thing. It interfaces with the network stack, um, uh, hence dealing with uh, all the um, standard net network uh, structures. Uh, and it should address uh, both the OPA, VNIC, and IP or IB use cases. And obviously, it should not be adding any overhead um, on the data path. OK, uh, this slide is a little bit uh, diving deep uh, into the uh, implementation um, of the uh, interface here between uh, the driver and the ULP. Um, in the, in the left-hand column, the first column at the very bottom, we have uh, IB device structure. Um, and we are adding two new uh, verbs um, um, or APIs to it. Uh, one is alloc RDMA NetDev, another one is free RDMA NetDev. Uh, they are in the same spirit as uh, the standard Linux uh, alloc NetDev and free NetDev. Um, in fact, uh, um, uh, some of the parameters are the same. Uh, as you see the setup function, the, uh, the name and the name type, they're all uh, same as what the standard Linux alloc NetDev um, defines. Uh, in addition, it has uh, um, IB device structure, um, pointer to IB device structure, the port number, and the RDMA NetDev type. Um, the RDMA NetDev type being OPA VNIC in this use case, and another possibility is the IP or IB, and maybe many more in the future. Uh, so basically, it returns a net device structure, um, um, and the user uh, and the ULP. Uh, uh, actually, the, the device, it being a verb, uh, the driver defines this uh, uh, API, and the ULP calls this a API, and it will get a net device structure, and it can register with the NetDev stack, and et cetera. On the top, we have um, a RDMA NetDev structure. Um, this is the structure, basically, both uh, the ULP and the bottom uh, of our driver is aware of. Uh, so it has uh, uh, things like fields like the, the pointer to client's private data, the IB device structure, and the port number, and a bunch of uh, some control operations. So the communication between the ULP and the bottom uh, driver, uh, it can use the standard NetDev uh, operations because both are aware of the net device standard net device structure. And, uh, but where required, uh, where such a interface is um, you know, not enough, we need more, uh, we can add additional control functions in the RDMA net device structure here. Um, on the right hand side, uh, we have um, um, uh, a um, OPA VNIC um, uh, use case of how the interface structure is defined. Um, on the top is the structure. Um, as we know, basically, the net device structure, standard net device, uh, allows us to associate a private data uh, with it uh, so that the driver can make use of it. Um, and uh, we define our private data to be of uh, this, this structure type, um, uh, which includes the RDMA net dev structure uh, at the very top, followed by the device specific private data. Um, so basically, the problem we are trying to address is um, that um, as both uh, the ULP and the bottom HFI one driver interfaces with the net, net stack uh, for a given net dev, uh, they both need a way to get to their private data structures from a given um, uh, net dev structure. Um, and um, there, there are two helper functions that we define, uh, which for a given net dev standard Linux net dev structure, um, the top one will return the private data structure of the ULP, and the bottom will return uh, the private, private data structure for the, um, uh, the, the driver. 
Okay. Um, and uh, let's, let, let's look a little bit uh, um, uh, in depth uh, about uh, the functionality implemented by the Omnipath VNIC ULP. Um, as we mentioned, it implements the required NetDev control operations. Um, and it also um, allocates the RDMA NetDev uh, using the previous, um, you know, previously showed uh, the API. And it registers the NetDev with the net network stack. It also does the encapsulation of the Ethernet packet. Um, uh, it interacts with the EM, so it has all the information required to do the encapsulation. Um, then it implements the IB MAD agent to interact with the EM. Um, so we have defined a new uh, vendor management class for um, EM um, MAD uh, interaction. It also implements the edge tool interface for the uh, virtual NIC. Um, uh, the edge tool interface is mainly for um, spitting out some statistics information. Um, on the right hand column, um, defines the uh, exact attributes and traps uh, implemented by uh, the EM interface. Um, so if you go through them, it includes the class port information and the virtual switch port info. The virtual import info structure uh, provides all the information required to do the encapsulation. And the virtual switch, uh, switch port MAC entries now, this is the MAC table uh, that I referred to previously. Uh, it provides the um, MAC address to delete translation um, uh, for the encapsulation. Uh, the unicast and the multicast MACs, uh, these are basically queried by the Ethernet manager uh, to know uh, the unicast and the multicast asso uh, addresses associated with the, um, uh, the VNIC. And uh, of course, an attribute to remove the virtual switch port um, uh, VNIC, and uh, some attributes to query the uh, some counters, uh, summary and error counters. Uh, the traps are being sent from the host back to the EM, uh, and they include uh, whenever there is a change to the unicast uh, or the multicast list uh, associated with the virtual NIC. Uh, and or whenever there is a change, changes in the Ethernet link status. Um, so uh, wh what are the changes uh, uh, we had to add to the HFI1 driver in order to support the VNIC? Uh, so basically, um, uh, it implements uh, the resource uh, management for the VNIC traffic, uh, which includes um, allocating free and freeing of the receive context. Um, and it implements the receive side scaling mechanism uh, using uh, the HFI1's uh, RSM engine. Uh, it implements the transmit path. Um, it uses the HFI1 SDMA engines uh, to, on the transmit path. And it supports uh, multiple transmit queues, which are um, uh, mapped to VL. Um, and it supports uh, you know, standard uh, uh, NIC uh, transmit queue, halt, and uh, wake up. Um, on the receive path, uh, it does implement multiple receive queues, um, uh, and it uses uh, RSM engine uh, for, the, uh, for distributing, uh, uh, for using all the, all the receive queues. And it implements the NAPI interface to interface directly with the network stack. Uh, it also implements VNIC uh, statistic support. Um, it, it, it supports the uh, standard NetDev statistics and Armand counters. Um, and it also uh, supports some EM-defined, um, uh, EM-specific counters. Um, uh, this diagram represents, uh, gives the queue mapping, um, uh, how the transmit and receive queues are mapped. Um, and the, uh, the first one is the transmit queue mapping. So at the bottom, uh, we have some shared SDMA engines on our HFI1, um, which are uh, mapped to VLs. Uh, a VL can have uh, multiple uh, SDMA engines associated with it. Um, for the VNIC, virtual NIC, um, uh, there are as many transmit queues as there are number of SDMA engines. And we use the Ethernet uh, the PCP uh, priority code points to, and then we translate that into VL 
Um, and then um, we use some entropy value uh, to choose um, a particular uh, STMA engine or the transmit queue um, in that, uh, uh, you know, uh, belonging, to, belonging to that VL. Um, on the right hand side is the receive side. Um, we have a bunch of uh, uh, shared receive queues. Uh, by shared, I mean um, uh, the same receive queues are used by all the virtual NICs on the host. Um, and we use an RSM engine to distribute the incoming uh, uh, streams, TCP and UDP streams, uh, to one of these uh, shared receive contexts. Um, and uh, shared receive context um, represents the receive queues and it's interfaced uh, directly with the network stack. Okay, uh, so the status and uh, next steps. Um, so the currently we have the, uh, the OPA Vinic patch series posted on LKML, um, and here is a link to it. Um, and the next steps um, include, uh, we, were, we are trying to see um, uh, what are the other use cases in the, um, in the RDMA uh, world, uh, which the Vinic uh, support might be added. Um, the one thing uh, that comes to mind which we should, work, we should, we should be uh, adding support is the RDMA CM. Um, so the, currently the address resolution happens, uh, I think, uh, over IP or IB or uh, Rocky. Um, so we need um, to have the ability to do the RDMA CM address translation um, using the VNIC um, to translate the some destination nodes IP address into um, uh, the lid address. Okay, um, that's all I have. Any questions? On the receive processing side, um, did you say that all VNIC instances on that host would share the queues? Uh, that's correct. So would an individual VNIC in a ways be presented with RSS? Um, so, um, so we have a bunch of uh, shared receive, uh, bunch of receive contexts, right? Um, so uh, those contexts can, um, you know, um, those contexts will be uh, used by all the, um, uh, all the virtual NICs on the host. Uh, the TCP streams uh, can, are diverted to one of the contexts, and in the software, uh, we uh, uh, provide uh, a demultiplexing and queuing for the individual uh, virtual NICs. Uh, 